Welcome back to another C Designs woodworking video tips and tricks. Today we're going to be talking about 45s. Particularly, 45s in plywood. You have this plywood that has different layers, and a lot of times you don't want that to be seen. So there's a couple different ways that you can take care of that. You can either use edge banding and iron that on, or you can use a strip of wood like this. This is about an eighth of an inch, and you can glue it on and maybe tack it on with a few brad nails and then trim it down to the size that it needs to be with a flush trim bit on your router. But sometimes you want to class it up a little bit by maybe putting some 45s where the wood will actually be kind of rounded over and it'll look really really nice once it's all done. But in this case we've got a slope with a flat part. How are we going to get the 45s onto the wood like we need. And today I'd like to show you some tips and tricks that I found that I find it a little bit easier than trying to use the conventional methods like a table saw or a miter saw. So let me show you how I did that. One option like I said is using the table saw. And I've got my blade set at 45 degree angles but I still have the angle on the wood that I have to cut as well. And so for that, I've got to use my miter slot gauge, which I find to be a little hairy. So I don't like to do it like that. You could also modify like a crosscut sled, but mine isn't modified to do that. So let me show you another option that you could do. Ah, uh, yes. Then there's the miter saw. And mine's a dual bevel miter saw. And so therefore, I can go both ways making 45s. But I can't make that angle. 45 cut with my miter saw it would be again very scary to make that kind of a cut on a miter saw so actually the miter saw and the table saw in my opinion is not the best to do this job those two tools are great tools and can be used in many different ways but in this case where I'm actually having to make a slope and a flat spot, I don't feel comfortable using those tools to make the 45 on my plywood. I went with the router. The router and a chamfer bit. The chamfer bit is a 45 degree angle bit. And actually a lot of people are going for that look these days. But that's not what I'm using it for. I want the 45 to be on the inside so that the two pieces can butt up together making a nice 90 degree angle. So some people are preferring actually the chamfer look over a traditional round over. Routers are a great uh, tool to have in your shop and I would say you might want to invest in one because not only can you make nice round overs you can use it to make a circle jig and cut out giant circle targets. What kid needs a giant circle target in their backyard? Every kid needs a giant circle target in their backyard. But you can also use it in a router table to cut out grooves and that sort of stuff. But let's get back to the 45s and I'll show you how I used this router with a chamfer bit to make 45s on a crazy slope with a flat spot piece of wood. I started off by securing the piece to my workbench. Now because this has such a small edge piece, I actually had to, what I did was hot glue it to my workbench. And I did this by using two pieces of painter's tape. That way it didn't pull the thin top layer of plywood off once I removed it. It would be glued to the tape, not to the actual wood. Another option is double-sided tape. You can also use that as well. I just didn't have any at the time. Now the chamfer bit does have a bearing on the very end of it and you need that bearing to ride along the edge so that way it doesn't take out too much material. So what you need to do is you need to have that bearing about an eighth of an inch on your workpiece that way that bearing will ride just along the edge. So you're taking off the majority of that 45, but you'll have to come back and do a little bit of sanding later on. 
Then I set the bed of my oscillating belt sander to 45 degrees and I just started sanding off that little bit of an, of an extra edge there, that eighth of an inch edge, right up till there was a nice point so that when the two 45s come together, it'll complete that 90 degree angle. Now that I've used my router with the chamfer bit, that gives me that 45 degree angle. And I cleaned it up with the belt sander at a 45 degree angle. And so now when I add the top piece with a 45 degree angle, that'll give me my nice 90 degree angle right over from the top down to the side. All right, so now I have all the pieces cut and it's all put together as you can see. But we're going to dissect it here in just a minute so you can see how all these 45s fit together nice and tight. Now that I've got the camera turned around, you can actually see the project all coming together. And these uh, top pieces right here and here, um, I actually use just a regular table saw or a miter saw to make these 45 degree angle cuts. Uh, I didn't use the router because it's, an, it's actually just a straight 45 degree angle cut. You don't have this uh, crazy corner right here. So I didn't see the reason to use that chamfer bit for this. I could make that cut with just uh, the miter saw a little bit quicker than using that. Now right here, uh, this is actually not a 45 degree angle cut. It's 22.5 and that will give you that nice butt joint because that's not a full 90 degree uh, angle uh, because of this corner here. So uh, 22.5 will get you that nice butt joint right there. So I zoomed in on the inside of the project here so you can get a good look at how these 45s come together nice and tight and create this 90 degree angle. And as I turn around here you'll see how that edge now comes together and hides the layers of plywood so we didn't have to use any edge banding or anything like that. So once this all glues up that uh, seam right there is going to be nice and tight but I will also then take a screwdriver, a round screwdriver and I'll actually start working this plywood even together tighter and it'll actually start giving a nice round over effect to it without even using a sander so I'm not losing any material yet and I'm, I'm actually forming a nice round over on this edge and then once I get that nice rounded over edge then I can go back with like I would go a very light grit sandpaper like a 220 or maybe even a 320 so you're not taking off too much material but you'll just clean you know any uh, wood that might be sticking up from you know the cutting and that kind of stuff because you're gonna have to sand your project anyways before you stain it and finish it. I hope you've learned something from the video today and how a router and a chamfer bit can help you out in your project that maybe you're trying to put 45s on your plywood so that way you can hide those layers of plywood and maybe you don't have a table saw or a miter saw these are a whole lot cheaper than a table saw and a miter saw in my opinion you can do a lot of stuff a lot safer now on the sander maybe you don't have a bench sander but you can use a, a hand sander a palm sander an orbital sander or even a belt sander to help get that extra uh, eighth of an inch off of the plywood. But a lot of uses for the router in a shop or even just around the house. But I hope all the tips and tricks that I've given you today, I hope that you'll be able to use them maybe in a project. Otherwise, take it or leave it.